Hey guys, that's sure coming out to you today with another Red Shot Legends Champion Guide, this time on Legendary Void Dark Elf Champion Vizix the Unbowed. We all get her after 270 days playing this game as a daily login reward. So, shout out to a few you guys, Tower Master looking at a free-to-play Vizix guide. That's exactly what you're going to get today. We have Tower Master again. We have EA looking for a Vizix guide. We have Alfonso looking for a, a, a Vizix. We have uh, Aniket. We have, you know what? We have a lot of people looking for Vizix guides. So let me just go ahead and scroll through. Aniket, man, you really, and Alfonso, you guys really want to see some Vizix. So let's go ahead and make that happen today. Oh, who's this here? We have May, Many Nukes 11. Uh, and Yannicka, we already put out, I believe, as well. Uh, Aiton Merck? Aiton Merck? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Let's go ahead and get to it here, guys. We are on the mini account today, the Vexthal account. Let me know in the comments below if you prefer guides on the mini account or on the main account. I would love to hear your feedback in that regard. Are you, uh, are you someone who likes, whenever I show content or, or a champion guide rather on the mini account, I always feel like, okay, we probably can't utilize this champion in all the areas because I haven't progressed that far, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But at the same time, the gear and all that stuff is going to be way more realistic and, well, you know, equivalent of what it looks like after you've been playing the game for 200 or so days, right? Anyway, here she is. Uh, looking at the base stats, 17k HP, not that great. You know, what can you do? Luckily, she makes up for it in the defense, almost 1,500. 97 speed is about average. We have a two-time hitter on the A1. Each hit has a 100% chance of decreasing the target's turn meter by 15%. She's basically stealing it. Fills this champion's turn meter equal to the amount the target loses. This A1 is incredibly good, guys. A lot of new players, I don't feel like they recognize this. A 30% turn meter steal on an A1 is very, very good. Very, I mean, there's, there's not an A1, legendary A1, that I can think of that is quite that good considering it's each hit and it's a steal, okay? Very good for areas like Dark Fae, uh, Fire Knight, very good for Ice Golem. Uh, we also have an AoE decrease speed on a three-turn cooldown, so great control when we talk about our A1 and our A2. Ally Protect on all allies except this champion for two turns on a three-turn cooldown as well. It's a great support ability that is going to be mitigating 50% of damage that all allies receive. She'll receive this damage instead. On single combat, her A3, she has a provoke for one turn on another AoE attack. Her AoE attacks are going to be do damage based on her defense. Uh, we'll look at her multipliers in just a moment. So the provoke on a three turn cooldown is fantastic. We also have a shield in this champion, 20% of their max HP for two turns. And then we have defense and faction crypts by 37%. It's a very, very good defensive aura for faction crypts. For progression, when you get her, if you're trying to beat the red boss for the first time or whatever in uh, faction wars, she will definitely be your aura lead. Uh, more often than not, at least, right? That defense is very good. So what do we think about this champion overall? First of all, she used to kind of suck. They gave her a massive buff. And now she's very good for progression, right? And you can even make the case that she's good in late game in some situations. We already talked about kind of Dark Fae and stuff like that, right? Uh, the one thing you have to be cognizant right at the gate with this champion before I even show you the build is she takes a ton of damage. She can be challenging to keep alive. Her defense is fine. The HP is pretty low. We love to see like 21K, 22, 23K or more base HP. But that HP is very low considering she's not only taking all the damage from the ally protection, she's also taking the normal damage she would be taking in the course of a battle. But then she's taking all the damage from the provokes off the A1s of whoever she's provoking, right? So we need to factor in survivability in a big, big way when we talk about Vizix the Unbowed. It's tempting when you look at her kit. They give her a four on hellhades.com, a five in Doom Tower floors. Absolutely great control between the decrease speed, the A1, and the Provoke. Uh, Hydra, four star. Clan Boss, four star. Spider, well, you guys can see. Ice Golem is where she truly shines, as well as Dark Fae, which we mentioned. Scarab King and Magma Dragon as well. Uh, great control, great damage mitigation. 3.5 strong damage rating on the A2 and a 4.1 strong damage rating on the A3. This champion can put out some decent damage for a defense-based champion. Uh, to, to give her a comp, 
You can compare it to a Grush the Mangler in terms of the type of damage that she's putting out. Their defense, their base defense is similar. And their multipliers, actually, Grush has maybe, well, they're basically the same when you combine them both, right? Two AoEs. Uh, so she can put out damage, but I would caution most players, unless you're on the end game and you already know exactly what you're doing with this champion, I would err on the side of building her with survivability and the damage will come in time, right? There's a lot of damage dealers out there. There's a lot, frankly, better damage dealers than Vizix. I think you should resist the urge to throw on crit damage or crit rate on those gauntlets and worry first about survivability on this champion for most players out there. So my total stats are 42, 37, 197 speed, little bit of crit rate, crit damage, and enough accuracy to pull off those provokes, right? That's it. Now, in an ideal world, I'd have her even more tanky. I'd shoot for around 50 or even 60K on the HP, right? Uh, same thing with the defense, but we can only make do with what we have. I have a broken set on her, but you'll notice I have lifesteal. I'm a big fan of lifesteal on this champion. However, it kind of goes against what I just said. In order to get the most out of lifesteal, well, we're hailing by 30% of the damage dealt. So intuitively, we'd want a lot of crit rate and crit damage. Let me see. Masteries. Let's go ahead and talk about Masteries now uh, before I show you all the artifacts on her because a lot of the, the, the healing, a lot of that lifesteal is actually coming from the War Master, okay? So from the Masteries uh, with that, that artifact synergy, okay? Also, I picked up Life Drinker. Heals by 5% of the damage inflicted when attacking with less than 50% HP, which is often the case. Now, I decided to go along with the offensive tree in a tier 6 uh, War Master. I decided to come down the support tree. I picked up Shield uh, Bearer. Increase the value of shield. That's how she's keeping herself alive on that A3 ability. Keep that in mind. I picked up the accuracy masteries, uh, swarm smiter, pinpoint accuracy, charge focus. I came in with arcane celerity. She's bringing the decreased speed as well as the provoke. So a lot of chances at turn meter, uh, you know, improvement uh, or boosting improvement. Boosting, I think is a better word, right? Uh, we went evil eye. We also went with master hexer to extend the duration of the decreased speed. The decrease speed, big version on the three turn cooldown, that's where it's at, man. That's the best decrease speed in the game. So we want to make sure that we can extend that if possible. Same thing with the lasting gifts, as I already mentioned. Lasting gifts is good on, you know, her own shield. It's largely irrelevant. That shield's probably going to go away anyway. It's more for the uh, the ally protection, right? Extending that ally protection is extremely valuable as well. So I like support and offense. However, let me just go right back to hellhades.com. I'm sure, let me just give you, what, what does he say for standard PvE? Well, it looks a lot like our build, doesn't it? A little bit different, but you know, a clan boss protector. I wanted, yeah, I wanted to see one area where they recommend going defense and this would be it going in there with i would say against dark fey i would probably go with this sort of a comp right uh basically the reason being is because having retribution specifically and deterrence to a lesser extent getting those counterattacks and that turn meter manipulation on that a1 is very valuable okay uh anyway back to the game here let me show you the artifacts that i have on her as I mentioned, I'm thinking survivability, right? My artifacts kind of suck on this account. You're warned, right? HP percentage on a broken set. If you get a good artifact like this with speed and accuracy and defense as substats, uh, you know, even on a frost set that you might not use, keep it, right? Roll it up, see what you get. So I went defense percentage. I went defense percentage. Oh, I'm sorry. I went HP percentage, defense percentage on the chest, and speed on the boots. Now, you can get by maybe with crit rate, right? Especially in lifesteal, as long as she can heal herself up. But again, I would play it safe and go with HP and defense, one of each, you know? Uh, we need to make sure that we're not totally neglecting HP on this champion. It is a mistake to go all out defense just because defense scales better because of her high base stat, okay? Uh, we have, we're, again, we're just looking for some speed. Looking for some accuracy, maybe a little bit of crit rate if we can, and some survivability on the substats. Uh, for accessories, we do have defense, a nice ring, defense with a trip roll, probably one of my better rings on the account. Uh, we have crit damage on the amulet, and we have accuracy on the banner, okay? Actually, probably one of the best banners on my account as well. Uh, so that is the build here. Let's go ahead and give her a run here, guys. Uh, now, on an account like this, 
where I don't have that many great champions, I can actually use her in the arena as well. I'm not going to go after that team that we saw down the bottom there, but I can use her in the arena and I can use her in a control fashion. So on a team like this, uh, and I think Vizix is actually great in the arena, you know, uh, in for progression, for progression, right? At the t Around the time you get her, I, I feel like a lot of people could probably use her. What we want to do is make sure that we're going in there and opening up with the A3 because we want her to open with the Provoke, right? Uh, in CC the enemy team. So let's go ahead and see how, how this team works here. Okay, come on, come on, right? All right, so we get a turn meter booster and Seeker. You can see Seeker is only level 50. I'm a big believer, especially on, a, on an account that you're either not spending anything or, or you know, minimal spending. I'm a big believer of just getting value out of champions without masteries and without level 60 if you can. She's going to come in there with the A3 lens to provoke on everybody. Isn't that beautiful? Now, ideally, we'd actually have her a little bit, well, we'd have her the same speed. We'd have Duck the Pierce going ahead of her, though. Having your debuffer set the table for a champion like Vizix is ideal, okay? Kind of treating her like a nuker in control all in one, right? Let's go ahead and go after a little bit of more of a formidable team here. Uh, I don't know. What do you guys think here? Uh, I guess this team, at least they have some legendaries and some max champions uh, on the squad. Some. <laughs> I saw that Norag was level 50 at the last second there. But uh, again, same kind of rinse and repeat, right? Now... I will say we're missing something on this team to make it like perfect for her. And that would be increased defense. Keep in mind, you're going to get more damage from this champion if you have an increased defense buff setting her up, right? If you if you have like a Mithrala with a Vizix on the same team, that's the perfect scenario. Can set up everybody with the increased attack and increased defense on the same ability. Uh, beautiful. Anyway, we go in there, we land a Provoke on everybody, and, and that's it, right? So you can see the synergy between an arena team like this, especially for new players out there. Uh, speed booster like think about the roles rather than the specific champions right i could name you 15 champions that could serve each of these roles right so we could have a champion like a apothecary being our turn meter booster or you know like a lysandra being our turn meter booster or an arbiter being our turn meter booster and then we have our debuffer going after our term so the fastest is seeker let me see can i click on him no let me go to another battle really quickly here seeker is going to be the fastest on the team just think about the natural order you want them to go right so Seeker's speed is 230. And then ideally we want Duck to go next. So we want him faster than 197. He's at 190. So actually after this video, I'm going to go in there if I wanted to run a team like this and build him to be around 200. So he goes and he sets the table and then she comes in a nuke and then Skull Crown comes in and nukes and we control the other team. You know what? I do want to kill this team. I didn't see the maxed out Helicath in there as well. Let's see if we can go ahead and take this team down. And then I'm going to show you an Ice Golem run, right? Because Ice Golem is an area where obviously we need a lot of support, but ally protection is a blessing and a curse in Ice Golem. She's going to be taking a lot of damage. She might die. That's why in Ice Golem specifically, or in any dungeon where she's going to be taking a ton of damage, I like to have a reviver on the same team as her, right? She might go down. Uh, that's why we have the lifesteal and good support, uh, support and heals around her as well. All right, guys, heading into Ice Golem 20 here. We have a team comprised of, well, all, eh, not all. The legendaries are free and accessible champions who a lot of you guys probably have. And then in addition to that, we just have kind of a hodgepodge of uh, a couple epics that I'm a big fan of. We already talked about Duck the Pierced, uh, but I love that guy because he's tanky too, right? And then we also have, uh, you know, Silda Drakes, who we get after, I think, 180 days. Uh, and then we have the rest of the squad here. But yeah, I'm a big, big fan of this champion. You don't have to, I mean, we're showing you an Ice Golem right now. But really, she can be utilized in in pretty much every dungeon, uh, as well as Doom Tower floors. She got such great control. Uh, I use her on my Fire Knight team as well, because again, that turn meter on that A1 is very, very handy. It's only a two-time hitter. We didn't discuss blessings, but against Fire Knight specifically, we could even go with Phantom Touch and get that third credit for a hit on that shield if we really needed it. I think in terms of blessings for this champion, the way to go is probably going to be, she could be an Intimidating Presence champion, strengthening your aura. She could also be a Brimstone champion because we're building her with a lot of accuracy anyway, right? We could also build her with uh, Temporal Chains. 
So I think those are the three options that I like the best personally. Uh, but of course, it depends on the team around her. It depends on what you need. Because she has two AoEs, we could even go Cruelty and decrease the enemy defense. So a lot of different directions to take this champion. Uh, I, I probably should have picked like stage 25. This team probably could have pulled off stage 25. The reason I chose to show Ice Golem and not another dungeon, uh, like Fire Knight, for example, is because that fire, or excuse me, that that uh, Ice Golem, he hits very hard, right? So I want to show how good it is to have lifesteal on this champion. I'm a big, big fan. Of course, as you progress to the end game, you know, you can graduate out of lifesteal. You can maybe put on... I wouldn't put Guardian on this champion because she's just taking too much damage in those situations. She's already having a Provoke and Ally Protect. It's a lot. That's a lot, both on the AoE, right? So we want to make sure, first and foremost, we can always keep this champion alive. Of course, you know, maybe building her with a little resist isn't the, the, uh, the worst thing in the world as well, right? Heal reduction is not going to be good to synergize with a lifesteal set. Uh, but the good news is, is normally both of these guards who are going to be applying the uh, the decrease accuracy, the heal reduction, etc., uh, they're going to be CC'd between the stun and the provoke of both of these champions. And Dr. Pierce has a provoke on his A3 as well, right? So anyway, let's see when this AoE attack comes in. Let's see how much damage with three ally protections up. Eh, make it two. Eh, make it, make it none. <laughs> All right. I wanted to see him get big, do a big, big AOE swing when the ally protects were actually up to see how much damage she ends up taking. She might have it right here. Yeah, she does. All right, let's pay attention here. How low does she go? All right, all right. Now look at the A1 too. Bump, bump. Look at that turn meter. That's really good. 30% turn meter on the A1. Steel, no less. Very good A1. And she didn't take that much damage there at all. Eh, not bad, not bad. Granted, only level 20 here, but still, not too bad. We only had one ally protection still alive on that last AoE attack. But she's a very good and competent support champion. Now, other areas of the game you can use her is, is Hydra Clan boss, you know? Uh, I feel like the ally protect to help keep her team alive, obviously. The provoke as well is a great option uh, for the head of decay, right? Uh... I would say she doesn't scale that well into the highest, like Brutal and Nightmare. Can definitely probably get by with Brutal, but you're really going to want maybe a secondary Provoker on your team. Just having one Provoke for one turn on a three-turn cooldown, to me, isn't quite enough. Uh, so I shouldn't say she wouldn't scale well into the end game. Of, of Hydra. She could be used on any Hydra difficulty, but you're going to want to have some backup provoke as well because it's not quite enough, at least for me. I like lockdown provoke all the time on Head of Decay. I hate that cleanse and all that baloney that he does, right? Uh, additionally, oh, I had one more point and I forgot the heck what it was. Uh, but yeah, anyway, unkillable, uh, just, just fantastic. Uh, she can be great in uh, in in uh, clan boss as well, right? Again, with that ally protect and with the decrease speed. That was my point. I like the decrease speed. I like to have a decrease for Hydra. I like to have a, an AOE decrease speed in a three-turn cooldown on my team whenever I possibly can. And she's got that on top of everything else. She really does so much, and that's the beauty of this champion. She's Void Affinity. You don't have to worry about negative affinity matchups either. Guys, keep the guide requests coming here on the channel. Visix the Unbowed. Very, very good champion. Uh, take advantage, man. Build her in lifesteal. See what you think. If you want to get crazy, try her in Relentless. Just make sure you can keep her alive. Much love, and as always, take care, guys.